watch your back. Because at the end of the day, you're good for business as an LPN because you're feeling that shortage until you're not good for business. It's not that I don't want you here. It's something about the way you stay. It's no secret that COVID has changed the game. COVID has came through and disrupted the healthcare system in a way that nobody really imagined. The number of critically ill patients just keeps climbing as ICUs fill with... It says that a nurse in the ER department made the 911 call because she said her staff was, quote, drowning and needed help fast. We are the nurses! We are the nurses! Nurses are superheroes and we're walking out today. Like it was speculation, it was just opinions, but COVID came through and switched it up. COVID came through and showed the real, the real. And one thing they can't deny is that LPNs are nurses and that LPNs are just as qualified to work at the bedside as RNs are. Now, I do have a little bit of bias, a lot of bit of bias because I was an LPN and I know our scope of practice in the state of Florida now, and we say this different, but in the state of Florida, I knew what LPNs do. Like, I did the job. So I am so happy that COVID has came through and disrupted the whole system. And hospitals are now waking up and they're like, hey, we gotta do something about it. Get these LPNs in here, we need them. Bring them back, bring them back. So there's no denying, it ain't no phasing out pool. It ain't no getting rid of LPNs who all those rumors that LPNs are getting phased out of the hospital, LPNs ain't nurses, LPNs just this and LPNs just that. No, LPN is a licensed practical nurse. And uh, how may I assist you today is the real tea. So I'm so, 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 so happy for this new initiative. And I'm so proud of us for making it happen. You know, I'm so happy that qualified nurses are getting into these positions and they are excelling, opening up the doors for other nurses to come in. Hey, we belong here. We're safe here. So let me just tell y'all, if you are an LPN and you're going to work at the bedside, know your worth, point blank period. Know your worth. Do not let them lowball you. Do not come in here making less than $25 an hour. And that is pretty low. So that's what I'm saying. Anything under $25 an hour is an insult. Because I know for a fact CNA is making 30 plus. Do not come in making less than $25 an hour. And that is mandatory. I know they like to beat on us for saying that money, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, this hospital ain't operating for free. Somebody paying. And we coming here, we ain't coming here for nothing. We living with something. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. Words to Brother Denzel. Anyways, know your work, baby girl, and then add tax. If you have experience, please, 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 do not feel like they're doing you a favor by asking you to come work at the bedside because they're not doing you no favors. It's work out here. You're doing them a favor because they're short nurses and that's why they need us. So negotiate. If you have experience, please, please, please negotiate it. Let them know that you're not new to this. You might be new to this hospital, but you're not new to the nursing game. You pass your boards, you're a licensed nurse, you have experience, you have skills. LPNs are heavy, heavy, heavy in the skills. From my experience, when I was an LPN, I was good on my skills. So putting in IVs, drawing labs, doing Foley's, placing NG tubes, all those things were a part of my scope as an LPN, so I did it. So, which leads me over to the next big thing, because really it's only two things. Get that bag, protect those licenses. That's it. If you don't take nothing else from my channel, if you don't get anything else out of the Chris and Renee YouTube, Instagram channel platform, it is get that bag and protect those licenses. 
You want to know why? Because these licenses gonna forever have you get into the bag. So you always got to do the two. You can't do one without the other, okay? Drop a bag down in the comment if you feel me. Be All right. So back to <laughs> protecting your license. I mean, it's no secret. There's plenty of nurses out here on the platforms telling y'all how nurses are being abused, misused, overworked, and put in unfair positions. And it's going to be no different for you as an LPN. If not, it may be a little bit worse because you have a limited scope. That's no shade. This is all out of love. Your scope is more limited than it is for RNs. So please know your scope of practice in your state because every state is different. I'm in Florida. I'm able to draw labs, start IVs as an LPN. In Cali, nurses from Cali, don't fight me in the comments. But the nurses I've spoken to from Cali said that LPNs in Cali can't do IVs or draw blood or anything like that. So I'm just saying know the scope of practice in your state because that is what's going to protect your license. Then know your policies and procedures at your job because that is where your money is coming from. That's how you're going to keep your money coming from that specific job. So do not be acting out of your scope and do not be acting out of policy. I know where I work, they team the LPNs up with RNs. So you got to learn how to play this game. You got to sometimes be a little bit nice nasty because sometimes you might get with a lazy nurse and you might have to just talk and let them know, hey, I don't feel comfortable doing this or this is out of my school of practice. Can you do this? Some And then when I worked on a travel assignment, they had LPNs right by us on their own assignments. They weren't teamed up with another RN. The only thing was she had to be working directly next to an, like the assignment it had to be uh, RN, LPN, RN. It couldn't be LP, LPN. It had to be LPN, RN, LPN. I mean, it had to be an RN, LPN, and then another RN. Y'all get what I'm saying? It couldn't just be two LPNs by themselves or two LPNs on the unit or just LPNs on the unit. It had to have RNs there to help them. So make sure you utilize your charge nurse if you are working on your own assignment without an RN. And make sure you document. RN notify. If there's a change in condition in your patient, immediately tell the RN or immediately tell your charge nurse so that she can lay eyes on the patient before you contact the doctor. Because it's a chain of command. It's professional. It's just part of it. Always make sure you reach out to your RN and make sure you kind of get like a mentor. I know we're all adults and people like feel like, oh, I don't need nobody giving me no advice. And we do. Because it's always someone with more experience than you. And even if I run into an RN or LPN or somebody who's had less years of experience than me, but they've been in this position longer than me, they know how certain people work. They can give you guidance. So please, please, please use your resources. Because at the end of the day, we're never too good to keep learning. And you're never too good to protect your license. Because if you don't have your license that back it's gonna be harder to get so just make sure you are following what is in your scope that's my only thing like in florida rns have to initiate blood lpns cannot initiate blood that rn that you're working with has to stay at the bedside for 15 minutes before the LPN can come on. Now, LPN can finish like watching the patient while they're on blood and can care for the patient after the 15 minutes. They can even stop the blood. They just cannot initiate blood. Also, um, LPNs in Florida are not supposed to mix medications. So, for example, when I go to the Pixis, the patient is on cefepine. The cefepine comes in a powdered vial 
and then I have like a 100 ml or a 50 cc bag with an adapter that you have to attach to the bag and then attach the powder. Shake it up. That is technically mixing medications. Technically. There's a little gray area to where they might not trip because technically you're not like um, figuring out how much mLs it takes to dilute the powder or whatever because the pharmacist has already done it. But I would definitely tread lightly. So just know your scope. Point blank period. That's the only advice I can give to you because at the end of the day, 90% of what you're going to learn is nothing that I can teach you on the internet. It's something that you have to do physically. Just watch your back. Because at the end of the day, you're good for business as an LPN because you're feeling that shortage until you're not good for business. You will be the first one to be rolled under the bus. You want to know why? The person that's lowest on the totem pole is the easiest to be disposed of. The same goes for me as an RN. They're going to protect the doctor way quicker than they're going to protect the nurse. You want to know why? Because the doctor is bringing in more money than the nurse. It's just life. The food chain of life is the same thing with the food chain of healthcare system. I'm not going to play with y'all. Y'all know I keep it real with y'all. Y'all know I come here with the best intentions because I want to see all of us win, which is why I'm always responding to my DMs. That's why I'm always helping in the comments, making videos that y'all request of me. Just make sure you watch your back. Point blank, period. It's nothing else to it. Okay? I love y'all.